Hey everyone, hope you guys are all having a great day. Week 4 of Tides of War Chapter 2 has started and this week we get our hands on a new support weapon, the M1922 MMG. A French medium machine gun that was initially designed and tested to be used in World War 1, but the war ended before production contracts could have been signed. However, development continued on the weapons into the mid 1920s and the MMGs were eventually used by the French Navy during World War II. A small number were sold abroad and a few did slip into German hands who then used it for coastal defence during the occupation. To unlock the new M1922 you will need to complete this week's challenges focusing on frontlines and if you're watching this video at a later date by any chance then it should be available for purchase with company coins. The M1922 has a 150 round belt magazine and a rate of fire of 770 rounds per minute. Both can be upgraded through the specialization tree which I will cover later in more detail. The M1922 can only fire in full auto and needs to be bipodded in order to aim down sight. It has the option of a 1.25 time zoom AA sight and a NIDAR sight that isn't available on any other MMG so you will have a slight visibility advantage over the MG42, the MG34 and the VGO who all have a reflex sight. If you're wondering what the stats are, the M1922 inflicts a maximum damage of 25 up to 10 meters, 22.5 from 30 meters, 20 from 50 meters and drops off to a minimum damage of 18.5 from 75 meters onwards. In terms of bullets needed to finish your opponent, you'll need to land 4 bullets up to 10 meters, 5 bullets from 11 to 50 meters, and 6 bullets from 51 meters onwards. That means you'll never need to land more than 6 bullets to finish an opponent, and if you decide to incorporate headshots into the mix, the 2x headshot multiply allows you to finish opponents with 2 headshots up to 10 meters, 2 headshots and 1 body shot from 11 to 50 meters and two headshots and two body shots from 51 meters onwards. These damage stats are collectively shared by all other MMGs in Battlefield 5, so it doesn't tell us much specifically about the M1922 other than the best TTK is heavily reliant on the rate of fire. So the faster the rate of fire, the better, and in this case that will be the MG42 with the rate of fire upgrade. The M1922 has a initial vertical recoil of 0.6 when prone and ADSing, a horizontal recoil of 0.3 and the vertical recoil is currently unknown at this moment of time. I don't have the figures yet but I'll leave a comment down below when I do. So if we compare the horizontal recoil alone, the M1922 has the second lowest horizontal recoil out of all the available MMGs. You can further reduce the horizontal recoil through the specialization true, but the rankings stay unchanged once all the other MMGs get their recoil buff. This makes it quite accurate and easy to control once bipodded, but the MG34 will still be a lot easier to control as it has almost half the horizontal recoil and fires at a slower rate. So the MG34 is still the best long range MMG for taking out targets from a distance. The time it takes to reload the M1922 when empty is 3.6 seconds and 5.8 seconds when you have bullets remaining. That gives it the fastest reload speed when empty but the slowest reload speed if you have any bullets remaining. This is because the M1922 has a belt fed magazine with a two stage feed system. The cartridge is first withdrawn to the rear and then pushed forward into the barrel. So do the exact opposite of what you do with any other gun and only reload when it's empty to save yourself a valuable few seconds. The only downside to reloading when empty is that you're potentially more likely to overheat your weapon, so keep an eye on the meter on your right and especially if you decide to upgrade the magazine further. The M1922 has a bullet velocity of 700 which gives it the lowest bullet velocity when compared to the other MMGs. However, that's only 40 less than the MG42, MG34 and the VGO, so the velocity is hardly a disadvantage or noticeable at all. It won't prevent it from being effective at long range and you'll still be able to somewhat laser your opponents from a distance regardless. So in terms of raw TTK, how good is the M1922 compared to the other MMGs? 
In the perfect environment where all shots land, the 770 RPM M1922 has a TTK of 233 milliseconds up to 9 meters, 311 milliseconds from 10 to 49 meters, and 389 milliseconds from 50 meters and onwards. This gives it the third slowest TTK regardless of distance, since all MMGs have the same damage model. That means every other MMG except the MG34 will outperform the M1922 head to head. So if you find the recoil of the MG42 manageable then the M1922 will be a straight downgrade based on TTK alone. However, once the rate of fire is upgraded to 900 rounds per minute, the TTK will be 200 milliseconds up to 9 meters, 266 milliseconds from 10 to 49 meters, and 333 milliseconds from 50 meters and onwards. That gives it the second best TTK just short of the 981 RPM MG42 by only 17 milliseconds up to 9 meters. Even though the MG42 is better off in terms of raw TTK, the M1922 has the advantage of lower recoil which makes a huge difference outside of the perfect environment where every single missed bullet increases the TTK. This makes it easier to consistently land shots on target and achieve an efficient TTK rate. However, once the MG42 and the VGO are upgraded to a faster rate of fire, the M1922 will rank third in terms of raw TTK. So I would say if you normally use the VGO with an extended mag, then the M1922 with the rate of fire increase will be a far better option as you will have more rounds and a better TTK. So let's dive into the specializations. What are the best combinations and what optics should you be using? I prefer to use iron sights as they provide the maximum zoom available so I can maximize its range to its full potential. And for my first pick, I've opted to go for recoil buffer. This further reduces the already low vertical recoil, which makes controlling the recoil a bit easier, especially if you decide to increase the rate of fire to 900 RPM. The M1922 has the quickest reload time when empty, so a further 15% reduction on the other side of the tree isn't really necessary. Just try to avoid reloading with bullets remaining, otherwise you may need it if you can't shake off the bad habit. For my second pick I've opted to go for flashless propellant, and that's not because I want to camp in a dark corner, I mean who would do such a thing? I mainly picked it as it's tied into the tree with the third specialization light bulb. The rate of fire increase reduces the TTK by a whopping 50 milliseconds between 10 to 50 meters, which is crucial if you want to minimize the time you're exposed to while being prone. On the other side, the extended belt specialization increases the magazine capacity by a further 100. The 250 round belt magazine with the further horizontal recoil buffer allows it to extend its range at the cost of TTK. So depending on the map you're playing on, this could be a suitable path for you. For example, Hamada or Twisted Steel. And for my final pick, I've opted to go for Chrome Lining. This will prevent the MMG from overheating too quickly, which comes very handy when your goal is to reload when empty. The Incendio rounds on the other side of the tree isn't really worth picking ever since they nerfed it, so perhaps a buff is needed to make it more appealing in the future. Overall, the M1922 is an all-round MMG that can pretty much cater towards both playstyles by simply setting up the specialization tree one way or another. It has a competitive TTK, an inherently large magazine size as standard, and less recoil than most. Let's say it's a middle ground MMG that is perfect for those who struggle with the recoil of the MG42, but can't stand the low TTK of the MG34. Will I pick the M1922 over the MG34? Yes, simply because it has a larger magazine, better TTK regardless of the upgrade path, and recoil is manageable. Will I pick the M1922 over the MG42? No. The MG42 has a better TTK even with the 250 round magazine, and I don't really find the recoil too hard to control so I don't see a reason to downgrade if it isn't going to make me significantly more accurate. Let me know what you think of the new MMG down below, leave a rating and I'll see you later. Take care.